Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to make a alligator clip stand. It's a very useful item to have. Um, if you need extra hands, you know, to hold something, um, we're going to be using these two alligator clips. Um, they'll go on to a piece of wire and you can bend them into whatever shape you want. And um, basically, you can buy these, they're inexpensive, but I went out and picked up these um, electrical clip assortments at Harbor Freight. Um, it gave me quite a few different types of clips and I can make quite a few of these and some other things out of these items. It only cost me $2.39. So we just need two of them out of that package and um, we're going to need a couple blocks of wood. So I have a block of wood right here. So what I did was I went from corner to corner and I made a little mark. Then corner to corner, made a little mark. And that's the center. Then I have a um, uh, upright piece. That piece I just had in my hand is the base. Now the upright piece is going to hold the wire and basically going to be attached to the base. So I'm going to do the same thing. Corner to corner, corner to corner, and I'm going to get my center line. Okay? So now we have our two pieces marked in the center. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the wire. All right, now I'll just make a little sample piece up. Um, obviously, this single piece of wire is not going to work. So we're going to want to twist some wire up. So we'll get a little piece out, again, just for a sample, and because that's going to be what's going to hold the clips. So we'll just bend it. Bend it again. One more time. Now we have four pieces. So we'll just nip this off right here. All right, so now we're gonna to wanna to twist this together. And there's a few ways you can do it, which I'll show you. But um, basically we're gonna end up with this, All right? Now, this is the length that I chose. It's, it's very flexible with the four wires. You can pretty much bend it into any shape that you want. So, um, we'll take this sample piece and I'll head into the garage and I'll show you what to do. Okay, we're at the vise. And if you don't have a vise, um, another way you could do it is you could, you could um, get a piece of something, wood or, or metal, slip it through there like that, right? And then you could get a, um, a vise grip hold it down and you can manually twist it but if you do have a vise that'll make it easier on you so get to one end place it in your vise grab the other end with your vise grip and just start twisting when you're twisting, hold it out this way. There you go. Then you would just get yourself some cutters and cut the ends off. Now this is a short one. This is just a demonstration piece. Um, I have the longer one back at my setup table. So now the next step we're going to want to do is we're going to want to drill our holes and screw this together. So I'll move you over to the drill press. Okay, we set up at our drill press. The first bit we're going to use is the countersink bit. And we're going to drill a hole right here with a countersink. There you have it. Next we're going to, we're going to place a hole in here, and that center mark. Hopefully this is showing up till dark in here. We'll change this bit out. This 
This is about a one eighth bit right here. Okay, let's see if we got enough height here. A little bit more, huh? On there. Actually, I'm going to make a little divot in here with a punch. Just going to take the punch and put a little mark right there so the drill bit doesn't wander. You only want to go down about a half an inch. Okay? So we'll go back to the setup table. Oh, actually, we do want to make one more um, hole. We're going to want to make a hole right through here. Again, dimension wise isn't critical, but I'd say, you know, keep it about 5 eighths or a half inch from the top. So let's raise this up. Okay, so we have a hole going right through it. So I'll bring you back over to the setup right, table. Back we'll at the setup table. I don't want to pull a fast one, but if anybody saw me drill that hole, even though I was on the drill press, I drilled it crooked. It's not centered in here. Um, and a little thing like that, me being a perfectionist, kind of annoys me. So I made another one. Basically the same exact thing, but the hole's in the center. All right, so the next step, get yourself a little wood glue. Now, normally the end grain um, absorbs the glue a lot faster. And a good practice to do is, if you weren't going to be screwing this together, was put the glue on here, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes, and then put some more glue because it absorbs in faster in, into the end grain versus like on the top all right so but since we're going to screw it together it doesn't matter so we have our countersink we'll put a screw in start it put it into that hole okay get it straightened up okay that looks good wipe off any excess glue Now you're going to want these holes to go this way, all right? Now, here's the, uh, here was that sample piece I, I had bent I just showed you. So here's the longer one that I'm going to use. So we're going to stick it through this hole. Nice and tight. Get all pliers. Now we're going to want this to be fairly centered. So we'll grab ourselves a little tape measure. We got six inches on that side and a little over six and a quarter on that side. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this through a little bit. Okay, so we have six and three quarters sticking out on that side. And we have five and three quarters sticking out on that side. And this piece here is just about an inch, so that's perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a little JB Weld. This quick set JB Weld. This stuff is excellent. So we're just going to mix a little bit up. Equal proportions of both the hardener and this what they call the steel. Mix them up. Get a little bit. 
place it right around here. Make sure you get it all the way around. And now you're going to take this and get it in there. Make sure you spin it around so that that well gets all around it. Okay? So we're going to let that sit for a few minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, we're back. So our epoxy set up, just for a little extra insurance, we're going to add, just bend this out of the way, bend this out of the way. We're going to add a little nail to each side. So get the nail in your pliers, wiggle it, get it started in that, just on the side of the wire, like that. Place it down on the board. a little punch like this and that's going to ensure it doesn't move. So now we want to make sure we got the same length on both sides. I got five and three quarter there. must have pushed that through way too far. All right, so we'll nip that off. Get yourself a Sharpie. We want five and three quarters. Make yourself a little mark. Get your pliers. Cut it right off. So now we have the same length. Now we're going to get our alligator clips. If you notice, there's a little screw here, okay? Screw the screw in as far as it goes. All right. Now, if you saw my video on making the transfer magnet, you saw this tool. This tool is um, for stripping wires, cutting wires, cutting bolts, and it also is used for crimping. So we're going to crimp this on. The reason why we push that all the way in is because it'll stop, I'm not sure if you can see, but it'll stop the wire at a certain distance. Then we're going to use this one down here, which is going to crimp it. We're going to want, if you look at this, it's actually a folded piece of metal right here. So we're going to want to crimp down where that fold is. So we'll place this on here. This part is going to be where that fold is. So we'll put this in here. Get it lined up. Squeeze down. Hopefully you can see that crimp. Now we'll come over and do it again on this back side. Now that's crimped on there, that's not coming off. So we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay. So there you have it. So now you have this wire you could manipulate this any way you want let's say you were doing something like this and you had another piece like this and you were gonna solder them together again now you have your hands free so it's a simple little thing like I said this cost me I think it was two dollars and thirty nine cents I said um, it's very simple to make, it's a very useful thing to have around, and for that $2.39, I mean, I can make a bunch of them. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Take a gander at making one of these for yourself. It's a very useful item. Um, if you enjoyed the video, 
please give consider giving me a, a like down below and subscribe to my channel and there you go that's how i do stuff thanks for watching